Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad to hear this Tuesday morning. We have a lot to put in this show, so let's get started with our weather brought to us by Hainan Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin and Highway 77. High today is going to be right at 80, low is going to be 66, and water temperature is at 74. Let's take a look at our all-important rivers and see finally what they're going to be doing, and, and they are going to start dropping down. This is the Apalachicola at Bluntstown. It is a fast drop. Uh, it's, it's right now, this morning, reading at 13.8, right right below 14, and dropping on out. Actually, by, by thirds, it's getting on down to about 11 foot, but that's still high. All right, now, the Choctaw Hatchet at Caraville. It's dropping, it's actually going to level off a little bit. This morning's reading a 10.2 and going to drop on out just a little bit. And it's going to get below 10, about eight and a half by the end of the week. But both rivers are high, so we're going to be looking at, you know, still high river, high water readings this week. Now let's take a look at our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery. Today is Tuesday, April 27th. We mentioned this, uh, 28th, I'm sorry. And we mentioned this yesterday. We're just in flat tides the next couple of days. There's not much tidal flow at all. It's going to be a low at 152 this morning and a high at 1241, but it's going to be like a 0.2 foot range. A marine forecast southeast at 10 to 20. And also, I just got off the phone before the show with Seaquarters Marina down on the eastern end of my viewing area. And they were so, they were so busy, uh, the folks coming in down the fishing, they couldn't hardly talk, but he did give me a quick report. The AJs and the Kings and Spanish are red hot down on that end of the viewing area. Really good fishing down there. The red grouper is re still doing real strong. The gag grouper slowed down a little bit, but also the trout and redfish are having good good results on trout and redfish. So it's good fishing down there. And if you ever get a chance to go in that area to, to try it out, it's just really, really fascinating to fish in that area. All right, let's take our break and we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm glad you're with us this morning. Got a lot to do. Let's get started with our pictures. We got a lot of them sent in the last day or two. So let's start off down uh, looking at some really nice catch of Pompano and Whiting. This is Marcus Parrish. This is a couple, he's done this a couple times this season. Folks, we're having a great Pompano run. That's a good job, Marcus Parrish. And uh, that's, that's some really good ones there. I, and some chubby ones too. All right, how about, you know, sometimes this is a nice email came in with this one. This came in from Joy Jernigan, and he said, Hey, Coach, Joy Jernigan here. This is a view my buddy Mark Gibson and I had Friday morning as we headed out to troll for some Spanish. To a true outdoorsman, it's not always about the catch or the kill. It's about being able to get out and enjoy what Mother Nature has to offer. By the way, we did limit out on Spanish by 9 a.m. and got a nice king. Didn't take any pictures of the fish, but we have several family members and friends who will be enjoying the bounty of the sea. Good job, Joy Jernigan. Okay, moving on along, let's get some freshwater stuff here now. This is uh, Michael Harris's son. This is, y'all have seen him before, been on the show with deer and turkey and, and now bass. This is Braden Harris and uh, Michael with season of hope. That's a good job, Braden, over the weekend. I know you had a good time up there. And look at here, the last morning of turkey season of 2015. He hunted just about, all, he hunted a lot this year and he did not get a gobbler until the last morning that's Ken Paramore. And by the way, Ken will be on the show tomorrow for his final appearance, so we'll get a detail on this hunt right here. Good job, Ken. All right, now this is a uh, husband and wife, and they fish a lot together. This is Diane and Diane Boris and, and John Boris. And John is an excellent fisherman, and so is Diane. And they, they really enjoy fishing down there at uh, Crooked Island. They catch some nice fish. Good job, John and Diane. All right, this is Mark Calhoun with a nice, uh, Redfish, I got to talk to him Saturday at the boat show. He had me this picture, and really, that, that, that's a fun fish to catch. A big old, big old redfish. Good job there, Mark Calhoun. Okay, I got a, this is a, just a, a series right here. I got this from my neighbor, Terry Richards. I, I'm going to read the email first, and this is a, this is a machete now. If you haven't wondered what this is, and, and there's a better shot of it, okay? Now, what he said, hey, Lynn and I, hey, Coach, Lynn and I were watching the show when you were showing some of the ideals your class had for inventions that needed to happen. One that caught my eye was the idea for a sheath with a built-in sharpener. Then you mentioned it again later. Actually, the idea has already been brought into production on a machete sheath. 
I thought I would send you a few pictures of a seat with a built-in sharpener. I did not know that. Terry, thank you, Terry, my neighbor Terry Richards up there in Southport. And you can see where a little sharpener is, and uh, that, that's interesting. Uh, that's a good, great idea. When did we think of that, Terry? <laughs> All right. Now, also, now here's some, this is interesting. Uh, our good trout fish from Mike Purdue sent me some pictures of some flying squirrels that Mike wrote. He said, hey, Winston, uh, these are pictures of some flying squirrels in my backyard. I've been feeding them for years. They are amazing animals. Okay, uh, they are fast and very accurate when flying in. They fly in usually right after dark for a few hours, then thin out. Some stay all night. That, that turkey, okay, here's a turkey. <laughs> he said that turkey was in my backyard for a few hours a few weeks ago. The turkey's been all around Parker and Callaway for a few weeks. It might be the, one of the turkeys from Tyndall. I had a great day fishing up in East Bay this weekend with some nice trout. And when Mike Purdue says he caught some nice trout, I can promise you it was some nice ones. Let's end this up with a pretty young lady with a nice bass. This is Lindsay too, and Lindsay is an excellent fisherman. Okay, that was a good set of pictures right there. You notice it was, it was a little bit of everything, and I really got a kick out of it because uh, you had a sunset in there, you had the flying squirrels and turkey and, and freshwater fish and saltwater fish. And that, you know, just a typical weekend here in Florida Panhandle. All right, now, alligator hunts. Let's move on along from the FWC. The deadline for applying for the alligator hunt permit is April 30th, which is Thursday. So if you haven't applied, you need to uh, jump on it. They're going to they're gonna pass out 5,700 uh, alligator hunting permits this year, 5,700. Uh, you can apply for phase one. It's a no-cost application. Uh, you can submit it at a county tax collector, or you can do it online, of course. You've got to be 18 years old, and that's phase one. Now, what happens, it goes to phase one to pass them out, and if then you got to pay. And if you don't get the money in by, by May 14th, which is $271 for residents, non-residents pay $1,021. I mean, a lot of people come in and, and hunt gators. It's just, just the thing about hunting a gator. And, uh, so anyway, if you don't get it phase one, and if the phase one people don't pay by phase two, then, I mean, by that deadline it starts phase two, and then you can uh, also get drawn for that. And they usually draw out. So uh, it will be, it'll run for 11 consecutive weeks from August through November, August 15th through November 1st. It's about the length of football season almost. So. Uh, that's, that's fun. If you enjoy that kind of stuff, uh, go ahead and get your applications in, okay? Now, I want to add, i got a couple of names. Uh, we need to add some names to our, to our pickle jar. They're coming in. And we, we still, I always like to show this. All these right here, folks, are, are people that's won this year. And also, you see this right here? We're going to be giving away. Remember, I told you in November, somewhere in November or this late fall, we're going to be giving away over $2,000 worth of or rod and reels and all, just all kind of uh, outdoor stuff to celebrate our 2000th show here on Panhandle Outdoors. So make sure you register. It's gonna come, all these gonna come out of pickle jar. I'm gonna put all these back in there too. All right, let's add these names real, real quick. Uh, Delane Bourne, all right, Delane Bourne, uh, Stan Bourne, Stan, uh, Johnny Jones watches on YouTube, and Peggy Jones watch, also watches on YouTube. So we do have uh, and if you went on YouTube, just call me and let me know so they can save it for when you're back in town, okay? All right, let's uh, take our uh, next break, and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back on this Tuesday morning, uh, wrapping up the month of April pretty quick. Monday, I mean, Friday's going to be May 1st, be May Day. We used to do the Maypole dance on May Day. I don't know if y'all remember that as a kid. Let's take a look at this poster here. This is a fascinating uh I'm going to tell you more about it. I just got this little poster here. It's actually going to start in May 23rd, and the Coastal Conservation Association is putting it on. It. Okay, catch a star tag redfish and win a brand new boat. Uh, you can win a contender, a, a Hells Bay, a Pathfinder. All right, it's going to be 108 days of fishing, and what they've done, they've released about 80 redfish along the along the. Gulf Coast. Now, they have released some in this, I understand, there have been some released in the Florida Panhandle. 
And if uh, you got to enter, of course, I'm going to tell you more about it. So, uh, but you can go online at CCA of Florida, uh, one of these tournaments. And it's really, uh, I don't know what the odds are on, on that eight of redfish, but uh, heck, all you got to do is catch that right one and you're going to be in good shape. I, I really, uh, I'm excited about it. I'm going to find more about it and pass it on to you. It's still a couple of weeks away, but uh, you can imagine uh, catching one of those. And uh, anyway, we'll talk more about it. Okay, I, one of the things I do, by the way, I really enjoy talking to a lot of folks at the boat show over, over the weekend. And, and uh, really, uh, I really do enjoy visiting with the viewers. They come from all over the place. And one, one of the recurring themes, I was telling Gail driving home, I said, you know, one of the recurring themes every time I go somewhere or around a group of people that watch the show and all, that somebody always brings up, you know, a little bit about the history of my book, uh, something, some story, and how much they still enjoy the book. And I tell them the same thing. They say, well, I pick up the book every now and then and reread it or read another story. I said, I do the same thing. And I, I got to thinking, when I first started doing Panhandle Outdoors, when I was with Captain Roy, uh, one of the th main things I did was come in here talking about some uh, history stories from the book. And, and people just found that fascinating. I, I thought I was one of, in a minority uh, when I was doing all this stuff, but I, I'm not. A lot of people, even a lot of the new folks, when I say new, that's moved into town in the last four or five years, moved in this area, they're fascinated and they have no tie-in with the history until uh, they, they want to learn about it. And uh, so it's, it's, you don't, it's not something you do just one time and forget about it. So I'm going to start uh, getting back into some of these stories out of the book. And, some of the, uh, and this morning what I did, I brought some uh, memorabilia that I collected while I was doing the book. And it's, it's uh, like I said, it's only four years ago, but I'm gonna, uh, to me, collecting this old paper memorabilia is really fascinating because it ties in with our history too. So I'm going to do it sort of in chronological order. The oldest thing I collected, and to me, it's just downright fascinating, this little card, this little business card, because it goes back, this is from the Ecker family, Charles T. Ecker, St. Andrews Bay, Florida. Look, this was before we had Bay County. This, we were still part of Washington County, and he was captain of the Red Rover, okay? That's the largest pleasure boat on the bay. Now, look at the top right-hand corner. You see a little hole. Now, that's not a little, that's... That, not a little rat hole, that hole is punched in there. The rat hole's on the bottom left where the shoes on it. But the top right-hand corner, they punched what he did. If you stayed at the Ecker house, and there's a picture of it I'll show you later on when I do the Ecker story, which is a big old two-story home, uh, that, uh, a, a hotel that was, it was part home, part hotel, right there in St. Andrews. If you stay there overnight and all, you get a free ride on that boat. Now. When I did my research, that particular card goes back to the 1890s, and there's not many things left in, in the 1890s that uh, that we have left. And I went, and I, Mr. Ecker, he he had an old box. Of, he said, "Here's a box of my junk." And he poured it out on the table, and I looked at that, and he was going. I, he said, "I'm going to throw most of this stuff away." He said, "The family don't care about it." I said, "No, no, 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 don't." And I said, "Can I can I have that?" He said, "Sure, here." And, and uh, I said, I promise I will save this for everybody and everybody get to see it. So here it is right there. So that's the story on, on that card. And it's just, and, and the Ecker family were fascinating folks and all. And I was uh, just uh, glad to know them. Then I started running in some old tickets and some old receipts. Now, like I said, I'm doing it in chronological order. And these old receipts and all were from like Bay Fisheries or the Raffield family. And, and this, uh, this goes back to 19, I think 1920 and all. It's just, all it is just some basic, basic receipts there. Here's one. This is dated in uh, April of 19, uh, 1930, 1926. Oh, here's one. You might see it a little bit better. And I, to me, I just, uh, from Bay Fisheries, uh, and I can't really figure out what it is, but it's Darnell family and different people, just different fishermen bringing in. Got six dollars for that. Okay. I'm going to show you. I'm trying to, I want to be real general on this stuff. I'm keeping it in plastic, and so I don't want to tear it because this is old stuff. Uh, this one is the, you see a piece just broke off, so I'll probably, probably the last time I do these. Uh, Jeff, is that going to stay right there? This is going into, I believe, uh, this is the Raphael family. You see this is September 1930, Raphael Fish Company. Uh, it's, there's Henry Raphael's signature right there. And it's just a group of stuff, uh, bait stories, uh, Menhaden, uh, different kind of bait. It's the Gulf and Caribbean meal over there at the Gulf Caribbean uh, Fishing Company out of Millville, and, uh, and that's a ticket there. So, And then one more, I'm just going to sort of hold this up for you. 
This don't look old, but this goes back to the 1960s. Can y'all see right here? It's Captain Davis Queen Fleet. It's a little flyer, okay? And what it is, and that's St. Andrew, and that's really the way he looks right now. But the fascinating thing, like I said, you probably can't read it. Right here, right here, it talks about the price of a trip, okay? The price of a trip, leaving at seven and coming back at five on one of the Queen Fleet boats. See, this, this is Ocean Queen. So this was, this was in the late 60s. Uh, the Ocean Queen, and it, the price is ten dollars and fifty cents to go on on a on a charter boat right there. The Ocean Queen right there, and also the Star Queen right right in there. So, uh, and that's in really good shape when I found that. So, collecting a historical, I say, a paper memorabilia is, is was fascinating. I don't, I've got a uh, a good collection of it now. And one day, like I say, I, I'm going to pass this stuff on and pass it on down to. Uh, to the, uh, maybe to a museum or something. I know we have a local history, so if we can get a local history room in that museum down there, it'll be cool. And uh, we'll pass some of this stuff on down so everybody can, can have it and take a look at it. Okay, now, let's go ahead and do, we're gonna do the drawing on a free book. This is from the, from the uh, boat show the weekend that's out there Saturday. I'm gonna give away a copy, a full box, okay? And I'm gonna autograph it, and these are the folks who actually well, there, they actually put their name in, the, in this little, this is a glass bowl. Well, I'm scared they're going to drop it. So uh, here's a winner right here. This says, okay, Chris Carroll. Chris Carroll. Okay, I believe that out right there. Chris is up there, Ponce de Leon. Got to talk to him. And uh, as he came down to visit, I really enjoy talking to him. Good folks up that way. All right. Uh, now, let's go ahead and get ready to take our final break, and we'll be right back. Now, welcome back. Appreciate you supporting all our sponsors you see during these advertisements and all. They keep us on the air, and so we really appreciate your loyalty to them. Now, here's Mark Coward on the fishing game and fish forecast for today. Our times this morning are 8.46 or 10.46, and this evening from 9.07 to 11.07. And Mark and Michael Coward did a really good job on the, on the clinic they did Saturday and Sunday out there on the tent and all. Really, uh, they do a lot of red fish, and they're, they're just flat out experts in it. So. Uh, you know, a lot of times you just target. They love to target redfish and all, and, and I, I love to target a lot of different things too. In this particular video, I've got a short video to show you to wrap things up. It's gonna, I'm targeting, uh, two weeks ago, I remember I was after those pompano. In this video here, we're targeting some speckled trout right up here in North Bay. So Jeff, let's go and roll this little short video. hole right here we keep drifting over every time we drift over we're getting a couple of trout and no matter what we're throwing we're hitting it folks we seriously we're in the express lane fishing game forecast peak time check this out Thank you. 
That is a nice trout right there. Look at that. I'm gonna go ahead and use this net just to make sure I get them good. Never try to muscle them up. Feel green. There he is, taking off. There he is. There you go. Released them right there. Save me the trouble. That was about a 15 inch, 16 inch trout. I hope you enjoy that. It's just a lot of fun doing, you know, so a lot of times, like we said before, we just have a little bit of time to, to go out and catch some fish, and, but I enjoy every second of it. So uh, we'll, we'll have more. Now, speaking of uh, tomorrow's show, we'll have Ken Paramore. He'll be bringing in the new young officer who will be taking his place, Travis Basper. So we'll have two guests on tomorrow from FWC. We'll get caught up on all the FWC news and, and, get, and get going. I, I was looking at this video. I, I was looking at this poster again. Folks, that's actually $500,000 of prizes and scholarships that are going to be given away. So, uh, you know, 108 days of fishing. So that's some really big name sponsors on here. And we'll find out more about that starting May 23rd. So uh, we're going to start wrapping things up now. This week we've got some really good guests coming on. And, and we just really, again, I tell people how much I, I enjoy doing the show and I appreciate your viewership and your loyalty to our sponsors. And we just have a really good thing going. And we're going to work hard at it. Jeff works hard at it. And we, we all do. And bring you the very best every morning of what's going on in, in the Florida Panhandle as far as outdoor news, okay? So we're going to wrap it up. As always, we ask you to do something good for your fellow man. You have a great day, and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.